as the Tesla CEO takes to Twitter spaces to say he will not be selling any more shares. This also coming as Musk looks for his replacement as Twitter CEO. So what does this all mean for the future of Tesla and Musk? Here to discuss is Tom Forte, DA Davidson Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst, along with Craig Irwin, Roth Capital Partner, Senior Research Analyst. Uh, Craig, I'm going to start with you here because, uh, you know, there's a lot of investors out there for Tesla who are saying, I think I've heard this one before. It was back in April when Elon Musk said he's not going to sell any more shares of Tesla. And he, in fact, did. So what do you make of what we have heard from Elon Musk this time around? And does that alleviate some concerns you think Tesla investors have? Yeah, with with his aggressive involvement at Twitter, um, I think there's concern out there, particularly given that there's knowledge he's looking for another billion dollars in cash uh, to fund operations at Twitter. You know, when people saw him in uh, at the World Cup, hanging out with Jared Kushner. Um, it's nice to see him making good friends, but uh, the suspicion is that he's there to meet with a certain investment authority. And, uh, you know, that means that if, if he gets turned down, um, it, there could have been more set, more stock sales at, at Tesla. Uh, um, so people have been concerned about that. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't follow Twitter, um, but I follow what's going on there very closely for uh, for for Tesla. And um, it's much more aggressively managed than people think. I understand that the headcount is now uh, below 1,900 people versus I think the last number I heard was around 2,400. Um, you know, so needs cash, um, but uh, cares about Tesla a lot. It cares about Tesla's stock price a lot, probably more than he should, um, and, and really needs to focus on um, where he wants to spend his time and how he wants to spend it. And Craig, I know that a big part of what happened with Twitter is this, this loss of ad spend, this loss of ad dollars. And according to Pathmatics, a research firm, they said about 70% of Twitter's top 100 ad spenders pre-Musk weren't spending at, around December 18th uh, uh, during this time frame. So a real pullback there. What is Musk going to have to do to instill confidence so that people don't think he's going to end up selling more shares of Tesla to prop up Twitter? See, it's a it's a circ it's a circular uh, problem, right? So Tesla's valuation we've seen is egregiously overvalued in the market. My price target is eighty five. I do rate it neutral, um, but Tesla has had a valuation based on hype, you know, a multiple of the rest of the entire automotive sector combined. Um, you look at Twitter though. Twitter is a <clears throat> machine. Uh, um, it is a it is a machine for um, you know putting out messages to uh, large amounts of people very quickly um, and and a lot of the information is not verified or checked um, so you know it, it's interesting that you know tesla's valuation based on hype and then twitter being a hype machine um you know and and and, and musk obviously sees tremendous economic value over at twitter um just like he, he does obviously at tesla i mean tesla's pioneered you know evs into in, into the modern the modern era um but it's 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 kind of a circ circular problem because as he spent more time at Twitter, people are saying that Tesla's being ignored, and um, you know he's a talented executive. Everybody wants him to focus on where they're invested uh, rather than in in, in something else. Uh, Tom, while there are questions about Tesla, that naturally brings up you know what's next for Twitter. As Elon Musk says, he you know he's listened, he's heard what uh, users on Twitter have had to say in terms of him exiting as CEO. You know, what do you see as that next step for this company as it tries to at least steady the waters, the choppiness that has been brought on by Elon Musk's presence there? Sure. So the way I think about it is Elon always anticipated that his time spent at Twitter as CEO would be short lived. Uh, I think when he put the poll out on whether or not he should remain CEO, uh, he had an expectation that that would be the outcome. So what Elon's doing for Twitter is trying to get it on track for the long term and then on a near term basis, try to adjust both headcount and culture. But ultimately, what Twitter needs is uh, it has tremendous influence, but historically it is well under monetized that. So if you look at the average revenue per user for Twitter, materially lower than meta platforms. Uh, and that really calls for an executive whose specialty is digital advertising, and that's not Elon. So I think what you're going to see here is that he acquired uh, Twitter. Uh, he's done a good job of adjusting. You know, I don't know if moral compass is the appropriate term, but making some adjustments to the culture at Twitter. Uh, the next step is bringing in someone to materially improve digital advertising. And that's going to be a challenge given the current state of the uh, advertising market right now uh, from what you're seeing at Snapchat, meta platforms, uh, really across the board.
So multiple challenges there. And Tom, in terms of credibility, obviously broken promises about selling shares and, and then, you know, not selling shares and then and then turning around and flipping and then saying perhaps, you know, Twitter investors, I mean, sorry, Twitter will help benefit Tesla investors in the long term is what he tweeted without really breaking it down. Now, we know that with all this sort of very public display, this circus, we've seen some price target cuts here. Uh, Dan Ives at Wedbush cutting his 12 month price target to 175 from 250. So still seeing some upswing there, but this really is still lingering. How much deeper do you think this can get before things turn around for Tesla? So the way that I think about it is uh, Elon has tremendous intellectual bandwidth. So if you're investing in one of Elon's companies, be it Tesla, Twitter, SpaceX, the boring company, uh, you don't expect to have 100 percent of Elon's attention but less than 100% of Elon's attention is much better than 100% from many others. So in my opinion, uh, I would imagine that he'll continue to sell shares of Tesla as he tries to get Twitter on firmer footing. And uh, we'll see how it plays out, but I think that's gonna be uh, what we'll see over the next 12 months, uh, despite what he tweeted uh, on potentially having a two year window without selling shares. Uh, finally, Craig, you know, so much of this has been uh, discussed in the context of Twitter being the overhang on Tesla, but there are, of course, other factors within the auto sector, the EV sector. Tesla facing a lot more competition here. There's questions around demand on the back of what has been, you know, recently announced price cuts. What do you make of that picture? And how aggressively do you think competitors can move come 2023 to take away market share from Tesla? It's been inevitable. It's one of the key pieces of my bear thesis for the last couple of years is that the um, share erosion would accelerate and other people would be growing faster than Tesla. You know, and that's that's really playing out. There are very many successful brands coming into the market, great cars. Um, you know, a lot of the SPAC IPOs have had a problematic uh, uh, ramp, but then there's some very large, well-established OEMs like Ford and Porsche that have compelling vehicles. So, you know, that's that's a given. But just to go back, if I can, to, to Twitter, the most important catalyst probably for Tesla in the next month is if we do see someone like Dick Costello um, come back as CEO, right? Um, Jack, Jack's back in the seat. All those advertisers that dropped out would probably be back in a snap and everybody would say, okay, phew, we can get back to Tesla. You know, it's going to be focused on growth over there. Um, the longer term catalyst for this year will have to be um, things that materially move, move the needle at Tesla. I think the semi is a joke. I think they really need to get back on track with the mini car and getting the India facility built, bite the bullet. Um, and then you'll see a real turnaround sentiment because people will see the organic long term growth opportunity. And that's what gets people excited about Tesla. Indeed, it always has a big thank you there to Tom Forte, DA Davidson, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst, along with Craig Irwin, Roth Capital Partners, Senior Research Analyst. A big thank you to you both and have a great weekend.